World, former editor of Hello Magazine. Good morning. Now consultant for various people. Uh, and we're going to whiz through the headlines first on this, yes, yes uh, this camera here. I, oh, sorry, I'm taking it the wrong way. There we no, go. That's I'll all leave right. it there. There's a special <laughs> camera set up just for this. I, you know, I barely knew it was there. <laughs> Good job I know, really, isn't it? <laughs> Daily Mail, uh, there we go. Shock rising, young girls binge drinking, once again talking about the drinking habits. So this is looking at under 15s particularly. Um, the revolt on the Nile is the uh, story on uh, Egypt's deteriorating situation. The Times, um, the Sun... Uh, has uh, a, a story about one of the people involved in that sexism row with the Sky Sports presenters and uh, the situation in Egypt on the front of the Independent as well. Uh, and this story here, my night on the Charlie. This is a story about uh, <laughs> drugs involving us. Uh, a uh, and well-known celebrity. A well-known celebrity. Uh, the Come Guardian on. has Egypt. What have you picked up on for us? And so does the Daily Telegraph. I think this uh, growing sleaze probe into uh, the misuse of millions at. Uh, Network Rail. I mean, it just seems a, an incredible story here. We've now they're now what saying that. What is the story here? Well, the, the the background to it is that, that they're saying that millions of pounds was frittered away under the previous leadership at uh, Network Rail. I mean, this, I mean, the, the fact that I think hit everybody between the eyes yesterday when the, the story first broke was that the chief ex the chief executive, who was paid 1.4 million pounds a year, he and his uh, business partner appear to have received 180,000 pounds every three months for unspecified services. And it seems that, that they had a hundred directors. Network Rail was set up by the Labour Party, huge public funds, four billion a year going into, into Network Rail, hundred directors, and yet no accountability to government. It was run independently. Yes. It just seems a is incredible. the implication of all this that this this is happening because it was privatised and because of the way the thing's set up? The suggestion is that it was just because it was public money coming in, they didn't have to make a profit, and therefore they were largest with the cash. And anybody who complained, according to the according to this story, was paid off and allowed to go. And some of the settlements are up to five hundred thousand pounds a time. Now, I think the interesting thing for me is Anthony White QC is now going in to investigate, but his investigation is being held in private. Now, if it's public money. Why shouldn't this investigation be held in public? Why shouldn't there be a public inquiry? Um, the Sun is having a look at the um, threat of the wave of strikes and what the government might, might do about pensions. So this is a big climb down. George Osborne said he was going to announce changes in the pensions in March. They've now put it back to June to continue talks with the unions. And uh, the unions are threatening a general strike over this. And one or two papers are making the point, which I have to say I have some sympathy for, is that actually people who, who are in public jobs, the public pensions are much higher than private pensions. Mm -hmm. To try and make this the issue to fight over does seem a little bit hard, actually, because the majority of people are on private pensions only an awful lot less. So to make the public pensions the issue to strike over doesn't seem the right one. One paper calls it the, uh, the economies of the kindergarten. In other words, the unions are, have got to grow up. Meanwhile, front of the Daily Express, um, a judge who can't send a burglar to jail. It's incredible, this. And every newspaper carries this story. Judge Julian Lambert yesterday had a, had a uh, burglar, Daniel Rogers, in front of him. Uh, because the probation service had recommended that the burglar got community service, the rules are that the judge should follow that, that guidance. Otherwise, the, uh, the burglar has a right to appeal. And the judge has just made the point he thinks it's absolutely ridiculous. Mm -hmm. it, was, it wasn't a violent burglary. Burglary, nonetheless, anybody who's been through that knows how that leaves you afterwards. The victim said he was very shaken by it, and yet you can't send him to jail. Do you want to just go through it? Well, you just got it, sort of 20 seconds. That, that, this last story about bank, is it the banker story? I think fat chance is, this should be the headline on this one. Uh, local authority Camden in London, they've got a lot of bankers living in that area. They're saying they're, they're struggling so much with public services, they're going to ask the local bankers, they're going to write begging letters to them asking them to hand over 5% of their bonuses mm. to try and dig them out of... Well, uh, only, only if you're a banker, just only, specifically that well, group of I people. Well, I think it's going to be the high end. I don't know how they would know their bankers, actually, but they'll have to, they're going to send it to the, the sort of top postcodes in their area and say, please, I think the answer is going to be no thank you. <laughs> uh, Phil, you're back in an hour's time. It's thank you very much. Isn't it? My yeah. pleasure. All right, Phil, thank you. Uh, you're watching Breakfast, coming up later on the programme this morning. And we will, of course, be speaking to our correspondents in Cairo a little later on this morning. That, of course, making the front of a lot of the newspapers this morning. Phil Hall, former editor of the News of the World and Hello Magazine, joins us. Just look at some of the headlines. America's secret backing for rebel leaders behind the uprising is the headline in the Daily Telegraph. Uh, Egypt on the brink is the front of the Guardian this morning. Same picture there as well. And on the front page of the Daily Mail, a shock rise in young girls binge drinking. This is uh, looking specifically at girls under 15 drinking virtually as much as boys they say egypt erupts is the front of the independent uh, one of the women 
uh, mentioned in the sexism row at Sky Sports, uh, the front of the sun this morning, um, allegations about Hollywood actors in the Daily Mirror and the Express, uh, a judge saying he's frustrated he can't send a burglar to prison. You're going to start us in the Express for a story about uh, our health and the benefits of broccoli. I love the fact that... Uh, it's what your grandmother told you many years ago. Now, now scientists take 30 years to catch up with what your grandmother knew, which is that broccoli is very good for your health. Of course, this is a lot more uh, scientifically, um, technically based. But what they're saying, actually, is enzymes in uh, broccoli sprouts, that's the young broccoli, are very effective in tackling cancer. And, um, and again, if you mix it with mustard, it brings out the enzymes and makes them work even stronger. But it's... But, you know, I remember granny, granny telling you, obviously, carrots were, were, were your eyes and broccoli was good for your, I think it was for your heart and for your, and for the, and for your, and for, for your system in general. Green vegetables, again, were good for your, for your eyes, I think, in the health of your eyes. And it's, it's fantastic that science is catching up. But how did granny know all those years ago? That's but, don't you find there are a lot of these stories? Every week. You know, every day, well, every day, it yeah. seems, something is good for you. I mean, the bottom line, surely, is You think the supermarkets are behind it, don't you? Well, I just think fruit and veg are good for <laughs> yes. you. But, well, but bottom you can't line, keep running right. that every day, yeah, can you? Your bottom line, you're right. But it doesn't matter what they do scientifically to try and cure cancer. It's the comes back to good old vegetables. Now here's a story you don't hear every day from the Daily Mirror. Oh, a sports yes. star underperforming pays Fantastic. back money. Fantastic. £7 million pounds he's given back. This character is a guy called uh, Gil Meche from the Kansas City Royals. He was their star pitcher. He performed appallingly last year. He had a contract reign for another two years. And he basically cancelled his contract and gave the money back. And he said, They've, this, this club has given me £20 million pounds over my career. I can, I can look after my children very comfortably for the rest of their lives. It's just not right for me to sit on the bench and take the money. So, I mean, it has to be said that he, he's not badly off no, as a result, though, is he? To be it's, fair, it's, he's well off. He could afford to do it. But yeah, well, even like so, a lot of players. Uh, there's a lot of players over in this country, I think, could learn a lesson from that. Yeah. Um, now, horse racing. Lots of people get upset, don't they, when they see horse racing Absolutely. and the horse is being I whipped? I love, love horse racing and hate seeing this. And I think it's interesting that, that Australian scientists have now come up with a study that shows that actually whipping doesn't help. This is in what, the Daily Mail this what, morning. In the Daily Mail, and they were studying really the form of horses, and they're saying actually the ones that are not whipped, it's all, it's, in fact, it's all about the early part of the race. If they're performing well, that the, you know, the, the body is warmed up properly, and they, they, they're performing to the best of their ability, it doesn't matter whether you whip them or not. It doesn't change the race in any way, shape, or form. And I think this will clearly increase the calls to, to uh, ban whipping. What do the jockeys say? The jockeys are not in favour of it. I mean, it, there are some, Not but most, favor of... most of jockeys are very uncomfortable about whipping. But, you know, the British Horse Racing Authority are very careful about what you can and can't do. I mm. mean, you're not allowed to violently whip a horse, for instance. It has to be a very limited um, a little knock, and you can, only, you can only whip them once, and, and then you have to wait to give time to see if it oh. affects a horse or not. Um, the royal wedding <laughs> that is coming up in April. Who is going to be invited and who won't be invited? This must be a diplomatic... Well, I heard as it came in, actually, I heard on the radio this morning, they were saying that uh, Michelle Obama was saying the royal couple should only invite um, who they want to invite. I mean, I don't think well, they have Michelle Obama is saying they oh. don't, don't feel obliged. Uh, well, I she? did think that. <laughs> I did think, do you, want, do, you, do you want to be crossed off the invitation list? But I think it's just very funny, this piece in the Times, they were talking about who, who comes and not comes. Sometimes it's serious. In, in the case of our Queen and Prince Philip, um, he couldn't invite his sisters, actually, because they were German, and it was obviously soon after the war. And then they talk about some of the sort of fallouts and the... I think there's a, there's a classic story here of, of a, a sort of bust-up between a, a foreign dignitary. It was, it was a Raj who became uncontrollably drunk before uh, one former uh, royal wedding and assaulted the Duke of Devonshire. They're saying it doesn't matter who you are, how important you are, they still get drunk and have fights at weddings, which I thought <laughs> was rather funny, actually. And, and there's a mention here, by the way, that Prince William's going to have a stag night at, uh, the night before, hosted by Jim Davidson. That's not politically correct, is it? In my Jim <laughs> Davidson. Be, I know, it's surprising, that one, isn't it? I mean, Harry, you expect to be a little bit outrageous, but uh, according to the Times this morning, Jim Davidson is going to be hosting, be the master of ceremonies. You okay. wouldn't have thought that Jim Davidson would be his favourite comedian really. in 2011. Not really. I have to say, where, where's that come across? Where, Michael where they McIntyre, met? maybe? I don't know. <laughs> He's got uh, big links with the, the military, hasn't he, Jim Davidson? That's oh, absolutely right. Yeah. He's yeah. Got always done a lot of stuff uh, for right. the troops, hasn't he? Yeah. Gone out to Afghanistan and Iraq. To be fair, he's somebody who's done a lot of charity work and the troops have been a particularly forefront of that. Phil, thank you very much. Nice to see pleasure. you again. Lovely to see you. Thank you very much. Just approaching 8.30.